Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about the data folder in Hexo. The data folder is a very special folder in Hexo, and it's basically used as like a mini database for your website. It's a place that you can go to store external data files that you might want to use inside of your website. Normally in Hexo, one of the ways that we store information is in front matter. So we have like, if you had a blog post, then you might store information in the front matter, right? So in here, I just have two posts. I have A and B. Inside of A, I have, you know, title, date, and author. And that's how I'm storing data. I'm storing the data in the front matter. But what if you want to store data that's not related to one specific blog post, right? What if you just had, you know, general data that you wanted to be able to access? You can use the data folder to be able to do that. So what you want to do is inside of this source folder, you want to create a folder called underscore data. And I've already gone ahead and done that. Inside of this data folder, you can create data files. And there's two formats that you can create these files in. The first is JSON, so JavaScript object notation, or you can create the files in YAML like I did here. YAML and JSON are also the two formats that you can use for front matter. So the way that we access data in the data folder is actually pretty similar to the way that we access front matter. I created this YAML file right here. I just called it my data. And in here I have some simple values, variables one, two, and three, and they each have just strings, right? Var one's value, var two's value. So what I wanna do is access this information inside one of my templates. I'm gonna go over to my index.ejs template and this is the template that I just use on my homepage. Inside of this template, I can access the information that's inside that data file. So I can type less than greater than sign, 2% signs, and then I just wanna type out, um, actually I need a hyphen here. I just wanna type site.data dot, and then the name of the data file. So in, in our case, it's just my data. And from here, I can access those variables directly. So I can just say dot, and I could say var1. And when I save this file, over here will pop var1. So it's var1's value, right? So I'm able to access this variable one that's inside of my YAML file from inside my layout. And you just do it like that. So it's just referring to data, the name of the data folder, and then the name of the variable. So I could do that with uh, variable two as well, right? I could print variable two down here, just like that. And it'll print out as well. So that's the basics of accessing the data that's inside of those data folders. You can also take it a step further and we could loop through all of the data in that file. So sometimes you'll store the data in such a way that you wanna loop through it. And to do that, we can use a for loop. So let's say I wanted to loop through all of the variables inside of that data file. I can make a for loop and I'm just gonna type for and then in parentheses, I wanna type var and you wanna just give this variable a name. We'll just call it value. And then we can say in and here I wanna say site.data.my, what did I call that? My data. So basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna loop through all of the data in that file. And then we need an open curly bracket right there. And then we'll close off this for loop in a similar fashion. We just need a close curly bracket and that's gonna close that guy off right there. So inside of here, this is basically gonna loop through all of the values in the data file. And those values are gonna be stored inside of this value variable. So just to demonstrate, Let's just print out that value. So I'm just gonna print out value and we can also break so it's easier to see. Over in the browser, this is gonna print out all of the variable names. Now this is maybe not what you expected it to do. So instead of printing out the values of the variables, it actually just printed out the variable names themselves, right? It printed out these three names. It didn't print out these values. And the reason it didn't print out the values was because that's just how Hexo does it. The way we can access the values is by referring to them directly. So I can say site.data.myData, 
and I can put a square brackets around this value. And now what this is gonna do is it's gonna access that variable inside of the data file. So now instead of getting the variable names, we get the variable values. So those are two basic ways that you can loop through. Well, that's one way that you can loop through content in the data file, but you can also, like I did before, just access it directly um, by referring to the variable by name. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.